Okay, 6.30 Friday morning. Welcome back for another safety meeting. Uh, we got an important one today. We got a mandatory uh, training that needs to be conducted by May 4th. So this will be available to uh, everyone at ECI. Right now we have currently 41 or 45 people tuned in. Hopefully we have a couple of stragglers coming in. Uh, we will be recording this uh, and it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. We will be sending out emails to all ECI employees um, later today uh, on contact, contact, uh, contact, contact uh, that Ken uses. So it should be a way to document training. But again, if you are a crew leader here and uh, you need to get more people trained up, please let the safety department know so we can uh, send out their email, send this out via email, or if we can't, we will be able to have paper copy readily available uh, to be picked up in the tool crib. That people can review this, this important information. So we'll get started today. Um, we're going to start with the code item of the week, and it's not to overpromise or underdeliver. So with our current climate, it is very hard to... Uh, figure out the, the, the really permanent information to your organization because there's so much information regarding COVID-19. So I'm gonna promise to try to keep this short and simple to our organization and what is important to us and how we're gonna manage uh, and protect ourselves from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So this is a slideshow deck that BOSHA and the Department of Public Health put uh, together, I kind of modified it to fit our needs. So all employees, including those already working, must complete and employers must document this training on mandatory health and safety requirements or another training program that meets or exceed this BOSHA approved training by May 4th. So that's why we're here today and we might not make that May 4th deadline, so I'm not going to over promise and under deliver there, but we're going to try hard to, to get all of our ECI staff trained up by May 4th. So coronavirus, what it is, again, it's just a respiratory disease that spreads person to person through airborne particulates, sneezing, coughing, uh, talking, things like that. So that's why we're all distancing, but together. Signs and symptoms, not everyone is affected with COVID-19 virus has symptoms. Symptoms include mild to severe respiratory illness, the symptoms may start two to 14 days after exposed to the virus. The symptoms that we're looking for are fever, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. Could be chills, repeated shaking with chills, muscle pain, headaches, sore throat, and new loss of taste or smell. So if you're having symptoms of COVID-19, call your provider. If you're having a medical emergency, call 911 or go to the hospital. If you do not have a provider, contact Health and Safety. Do not come to work, but contact Health and Safety, and we can hopefully utilize Champlain Medical. A CDC self-checker tool. This is a. a this will be available uh, in a link form. It's a nice little uh, yes, no. You answer a bunch of questions, and they kind of tell you how to follow. Uh, it's like a flow chart and what to do at the end of the day. Um, uh, there's a whole lot of sectors um, that have different types of risks. So I deleted all of the little ones, but so we're categorized as a low risk or a caution uh, employer. So jobs that do not require contact with people known to be or subject of being infected with COVID-19, nor frequent close contact within six feet of the general public, because we can kind of isolate ourselves with with fencing and we're on private properties in, in situations like that. So workers in this category have a minimal occupation contact with the public and their coworkers because we can set up proper controls to maintain those distances. And then we're following the governor's orders with our micro crews of no more than five people on a project. So this is a mandatory health and safety requirements for all businesses, nonprofit or government operations and all business must follow the Department of Health and the CDC guidelines and the VOSHA standards. So here's some of the 
mandatory requirements. Employees shall not report to or be allowed to remain at work or job site if sick or symptomatic with fever, cough, and or shortness of breath. You will be asked to leave the site if symptoms occur during the workday and please uh, follow best practices and, and, and when you are feeling ill, you know, A, do not come to work, but B, uh, don't feel like you need to power through the day. Let's get you home and let's get you feeling better. Non-symptomatic COVID-19 positive workers are not allowed on site or any workers who have contacted with a worker or any other person who is diagnosed with COVID-19 are required to quarantine for 14 days. So if you do have a test and a test is positive, even if you're non-symptomatic, you still have to quarantine for 14 days. Uh, signs must be posted on all entries, clearly indicated that no one may enter if they have symptoms of respiratory illness. Uh, we have ordered these signs last week. We will be uh, issuing out these signs um, later today. I think maybe they'll be in next week. Um, so we're, those will be readily available and we're mostly gonna go through project managers um, so they'll take care of, of, of the postings and signage on their assigned projects. Uh, to the extent feasible, prior to commencing of each work shift or pre-screening or survey shall be required to verify each employee has no symptoms or respiratory illness, fever, cough, or shortness of breath, including temperature checks. Um, we do have thermometers available, but we are asking all of our employees to just please stay home if you're not feeling well. Call your, call your direct line supervisor and let them know that you need to take a day and then please check your temperature before you show up to work. But if something happens during your shift, please contact Health and Safety and we will be able to supply you uh, with a thermometer and you can do your own screening away from all your workers, hopefully in your own personal vehicle, so then you can head home after. All employees must observe strict social distancing of six feet while on the job, unless noted, and should refrain from touching their face. No, uh, no employees are allowed to congregate. All common areas such as break rooms and cafeterias, but including restrooms, uh, should be closed. Again, we do not want to have uh, a gathering of people in, in a small area. When working inside, open doors and windows to promote airflow to the greatest extent possible and limit the number of people occupying a single indoor space. No more than two people shall occupy one vehicle when conducting work and shall wear face coverings when riding together. We are allowed to have more than two if we do put up some type of barrier, such as a plexiglass uh, insert um, that can protect uh, each individual group inside a vehicle. We do not currently have that with our service vehicles, but we are looking to see if it is possible. Employees must wear face coverings over their nose and mouth when in the presence of others. A shield or sneeze guard is acceptable in lieu of a mask. So the, our hard hat face shields would fit this bill. So that is another way for us to uh, protect one another. And I know it's vague. I know that presence of others, but again, it's within, you know, when we're working in our micro crews of five currently, we are in the presence of others. So these things need to be readily available. You know, if you're off raking topsail kind, kind of like 10, 15 feet away, you, know, you can have it down behind your chin. But there's a good, good chance that during in, in your shift that someone's going to come over and talk to you. When that situation happens, we need to be wearing these facial coverings. All common spaces and equipment, including bathrooms, frequently touch surface and doors and tools and equipment and vehicles must be cleaned and disinfected at the beginning, middle, and end of each shift and when possible prior to transfer from one person to another. So there's a couple, uh, everything is available in the tool crib and we're gonna go in, into more detail uh, with that here in a minute. Um, but it's also a good thing to kind of color code your tools for each person. Uh, you can use red, green, orange, all of our dig safe markings 
uh, for your tools to kind of say, hey, this individual, uh, you know, say Charlie has the red today, Zach has the, the blue shovel, you know, and that's just kind of your designated, you know, your tool for, for, the, for the next foreseeable future so you can, everybody can maintain their own tools and clean their own tools. Uh, employees must have easy and frequent access to soap and water or hand sanitizer during uh, the duration of work and hand washing and hand sanitation is required frequently, including before entering and leaving job sites. So that's kind of our mandatory requirements and we're going to quickly go over our prevention pre preparedness and response plan utilizing our hierarchy of controls to combat COVID-19. So we, like we do with all of our hazards, we're going to utilize this tool to try to hopefully either physically remove, replace it, isolate it from us, or if we have to change the way we work around it. And then our last line of defense is our personal protective equipment. So when we're trying to work through this, elimination and substitution, I guess, is the most effective. That means that we're not exposing ourselves to any possibility, probability, of uh, coming in contact with someone with COVID-19 or just any germs, period. So, so building shops, offices, access for essential needs only. All visitors to these buildings are to wear face coverings and maintain a six foot uh, social distancing rule. What we're trying to say here is don't go to the office or don't go to the tool crib unless it's necessary. You know, if you need to, if, if you can't, uh, get a, a hold of somebody via phone, just be patient and please try again. Try to pre-order all your tools, equipment, and questions ahead of time uh, from the office, the shops, the tool crypt. You need to get a hold of Larry. You can't get a hold of him, leave him a message, but be patient. You don't need to you know, walk over to Larry's shop, open the door and, and try to find him. You know, just be patient. We need to all be patient during this time because we need to try to be together, but be separated from person to person contact. Uh, plan ahead to minimize trips to shops and, and suppliers, and then also respect workplaces of others. So try to try to do your best to plan ahead is, is, the, is the goal there and not have to have easy trips to, to the tool crib, just for the onesie twosie things, plan ahead, call Elliot and he will, uh, you will get everything put in the, in the yellow connex out back. Now, going through the engineering controls, uh, the next one uh, is a very effective method is to one, stay home if you're not feeling well, and two, follow our social distancing. So staying home if you're not feeling well, we need to really make sure that we change the way that we have been uh, really for a long time in construction, because I do it, I know a lot of people on this call, you know, show up when they're just not really quite feeling well. If it's a little bit of a cough or a sore throat, um, you know, they're just not feeling like themselves, but they still power through it. We need to change those behaviors. We need to just shut it down for a day and assess because time will help us when it comes to COVID-19. So we need to actively care for one another. If someone calls in, let's not give them a hard time. Let's say, yep, you're doing the right thing. Uh, we'll check in with you stay home, feel better, and we'll monitor the situation moving forward. Contact health and safety too, so we can uh, assist in this process. You know, our priority needs to be on COVID-19 to help us get through these trying days. We must be understanding and we must be patient with one another. So employees shall not report or be allowed to remain at work if they have, uh, are, are feeling symptomatic of the symptoms that we talked about earlier. Non-symptomatic COVID positive workers are not to be allowed on site. Again, it's those 14 day quarantine uh, that we've been talking about. And then social distancing is again, it's our physical distancing, I mean keeping space between yourself and other people's outside your home and is the most effective means to protecting from exposure and the spread. This is our best, uh, you know, really, uh, engineering control is just staying six feet and more from each other. Do not gather in groups. It's going to be very hard for us. We are very socially uh, communal and we like to, you know, be informed, keep informed and, and be and talk 
you know, roughly within, definitely always within six feet. So this is a big behavioral change. It's going to take some time, but everybody just need to do your part to say, hey, you know, let's try to maintain six feet right from Jump Street. And uh, if you feel like you're, uh, if you feel like you are being, uh, you know, someone's coming in, in, in breaking that six foot deal, just keep backing up a little bit and then see if they, the other individual is noticing that. And if they're not, then just nicely just step in and say, please, let's maintain the six feet. And then hopefully everybody can follow suit. Any face-to-face -face contact less than six feet is not effective and should only be done in conjunction with wearing a mask. So in noisy, loud environments, that's like our job sites, you know, if we need to communicate, uh, we need to we need to make sure those masks are being worn if we can't maintain that six feet. So administrative controls is what we have is training, which we're doing here today. And it's gonna take a lot of training because these are some behavioral change that needs to be done and it's not gonna happen like flipping a switch. So we're gonna all work on this together and we're gonna keep keep hitting these kind of key points uh, moving forward. But quickly on personal hygiene and then our mandatory employee disinfecting practices. So our personal hygiene, again, when available, soap and water, uh, hand sanitizer, is available in the tool crib. Uh, the hand sanitizer is priority for the field workers. Um, the office staff um, has uh, water and soap available uh, in, in, in the offices. We do have a sterile alcohol prepad. They are available in the tool crib. These are great for phones, tablets, steering wheels, things like that. Um, they're not great for cleaning, cleaning your hands, but it's kind of like after you clean your hands with say Joe's hand cleaner that we have, you can throw on this alcohol pre pads uh, to clean your hands and other common surfaces. So some of the best practices, again, if not wearing facial covering, cough or sneeze into your elbow, like we've been hearing about, uh, avoid you know shaking hands and, and anything that you could potentially spread germs with and then maintain supplies to the crew, making sure that we have all the cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers, um, hand cleaners, all that stuff available to, to stop the spread of germs. Avoid hand to face contact as much as possible because they're saying that's really the, the biggest part of uh, big potentially exposure is hand to mouth, hand to face, hand to eye contact. Uh, mandatory employee disinfecting practices. Again, we wanna disinfect our, our vehicles and our equipment minimal three times a day. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite a difference from our normal routine. So again, behavior changes here, but again, it's going to be nice because hopefully we have a lot of cleaner equipment out there and, and we don't have a lot of, um, we have some nice clean looking equipment, I should just say. So no sharing uh, vehicles, equipment, and tools until it is disinfected. So that's a big one. Like I kind of said earlier, mark your, mark your different tools uh, with different paint colors. Uh, to be able to identify who shovel is who or who uh, skill saw is who. Um, and then don't, if you do, it is needs to be a shared tool, let's disinfect it before it exchanges hands. Daily wipe down of common surfaces and disinfecting supplies is available in the tool crib and just please call ahead. So the biggest thing with the tool crib, I'll mention it here, is, is please get with your foreman, the foreman's please contact Elliot in the tool crib and Elliot has a pickup and re receiving Connex box in the back of uh, near the um, ice chests. There's a yellow Connex box and that's where all your packages can be picked up. So there's no need to actually physically go in the building. Everything is will be labeled for you and you can pick up. And please try to uh, bulk order so Elliot doesn't get over 100 phone calls with just the onesie twosies. Try to set up your, your site uh, with what you need um, and, and come pick it up. And then I'm trying, when I do kind of a check-in on projects, I'm trying to make sure that I have everything I need uh, in my truck so I can also issue out supplies when I make a visit. And I've been trying to call ahead to let everybody know that I might swing by uh, if I can stop if we have less than five people on the site. Uh, personal protective equipment is our last line of defense. So again, do not share PPE. Uh, utilize disposable gloves if you're uncertain or when you're cleaning um, an unknown surface. Um, it, it's again way, a great way to protect yourself 
wearing gloves all the time. Another way to protect yourself from any of the hand to mouth contact. If you're wearing gloves, uh, take your gloves off and then adjust what uh, might be bothering you. You know, if it's your facial covering or, or whatnot. And then we have our facial covering policy, which we'll go into more detail now. So our facial covering policy is employees must wear facial coverings over their nose and mouth in the presence of others. Again, that presence of others is really right around that six feet. When we are congregating or we are, 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 being, uh, are communicating or talking to one another regarding a task or just a check-in, facial coverings must be worn. You know, if we're off doing a kind of a task by ourselves and we're, we're kind of isolated, you know, we can have those down, but they need to be readily available, especially with a micro cruise of five. We got to have them at least visible around our, uh, you know, around our neck. And all we have to do is put them up in front of our face. All employees shall have a face covering that is readily available to be put on um, in those situations. Um, Facial coverings should consist of simple cloth coverings like a bandana or neck gaiter. These are available in the tool crib. Please contact your foreman and call, and then they will call Elliot to make sure. And then also please make sure that you're coming to work um, with, with them at all times. We, you will be asked to go home if you do not have uh, this, this PPE. So the N95s are similar, are not recommended. Again, the, those are more particulate based um, Respirators that are more for controls of uh, silica, lead, other type of uh, health hazards. Um, so we would not be issuing out N95s uh, for any employee uh, for just a facial covering. Those are designed for protecting us in other really dusty environments. So some covering uh, options, examples. Um, in vehicles and equipment when operating alone, you know, you don't need to have them on. Working alone in general, isolated from others in the public, it's okay. But again, we want to see them readily available. Situations when you can always maintain six plus feet distancing, you know, but again, we want to make sure that if you are really have controls in place, such as everybody is really, really aware that you cannot come six feet away from anybody. So Again, we rather have you have these things readily available than trying to say for our daily site, um, for our JHA saying that, hey, everybody's just gonna stay six feet away. We know that that's not gonna be the case because it's easy to congregate, it's easy to, to break that distance. So shall be readily available if the situation changes. So have those facial coverings on. Um, when they are required, again, working, in areas where the public isn't isolated uh, from us, such as like a city sidewalk or, you know, when, when traveling public are easily entering, walking, not driving you know, through our areas. Working within tight corridors from one another, we have to maintain that teams of five currently. So, you know, if we are teams of five in a kind of a, a smaller uh, job site, and it's very difficult to maintain six feet, again, wearing them all the time. Projects with more strict requirements as indicated by the owner or GC. Uh, we haven't seen this yet, but it could happen where we say we work for PC, it could just be 100% of the time. No questions, whatever, all the time we have to wear them. So we haven't seen that yet, but that's a, that's a possibility. So we wanted to bring that up. On-duty employees shall wear facial coverings while entering in the following spaces. So again, when, when on duty and you're running to the store or convenience store to grab a coffee, we want to see ECI employees wearing these facial coverings out in public, you know, visiting Home Depot, North Tracks, Charlie Boys, Queen City Steel, all those uh, type of uh, vendors or uh, also flagging in pedestrian areas and entering all ECI buildings. So again, when you're in going to the office, the tool crib, the shop, going to see Larry, uh, in any area where six feet distance isn't isn't allowed, we should be wearing these facial coverings because it's gonna prevent the spread of germs. Now, I, I, I went through a lot of information. Uh, I'm not gonna open up um, everybody's mics. We got 60 people now on tune. I would say that please contact Health and Safety if you do have any questions. Um, we are answering a lot of different questions uh, regarding anything from what to do with our shared water Again, I would say, again, the intent 
uh, you know, to, to stay hydrated on, on our projects. But again, if we can separate each employee to have, have bring their own cooler to work, you can kind of cooler and ice, you can take the water, each individual can, can take the water, put it in their own bucket. But if there is a shared ice bucket, you know, wiping your hands really clean before you uh, grab a, a thing of water. You know, those are the types of situations that, you know, we just have to do a good assessment before we uh, go ahead and do something. How can we prevent the spread of germs before we go and do something? That's the type of mindset that we need to have. We will be issuing out training cards um, as well. Uh, they will be available on our Hilti app uh, and their avail availability it will be di mostly digital, the emails, things like that. And then uh, paper, paper copies will come down the road. So with that said, I'm gonna kick it over to Ken now for the rest of our safety presentation. Just gotta find Ken in the long list of people. There he is, make presenter. Okay, Ken, you have control. There, now I'm on me. So let's oh, see here. Good job, Matt. Good job, Matt. Matt. Let me turn this down because it's echo. So uh, there's just uh, one or two more things I want to add. I guess that if the if your crew leader says, hey, you know, even if you don't really think you need your face protection or any other special protocols, leave it to your, your uh, if your crew leader makes a, a statement, hey, you need that on, don't argue, just get it on. A lot of this is about appearance. The public is watching us and, and kind of watching all contractors, kind of grading us on, on how well we're doing here. And, and it's critical to, to be on uh, on the right protocol or, or there'll be, uh, this will take a lot longer for the whole state even because it's already been challenged, not necessarily by our, of our crews, but others. Okay, I'm going to get to the email of the week. And for announcements, again, uh, we want to make sure we can get our time in early by Monday morning and approved, of course, speed things along because everybody's still mostly working remotely with, uh, with some exceptions, but it's a pretty small staff within the office, the administrative office at any time. Uh, paychecks, live and direct deposits, stubs will be sent out by regular mail. And please do not come in the office for your paycheck or other business. If a transaction is required, just coordinate by phone. We'll figure something out. We have one new hire this week. It's uh, Mark Curtis. He is a CDL driver. And congratulations to Alec Maternal for passing his crane operator certification. And here we have uh, a picture of the new employee, Mark Curtis in uh, truck 566. So we'll be looking for Mark and say hi and introduce yourself. And see, there's an example within the truck, you don't need uh, your face covering. And so whoever took this picture was obviously several feet away. So otherwise we'd have a nice close mug shot of, uh, of Mark. For these policies, like the ones we just talked about, there's partly summarized here. We'll probably have this new document uh, that was presented today and here on this list next week. But also, again, uh, restating what Matt said, if you didn't attend, if you're attending late or you missed part of the presentation or you have someone on your crew who wasn't able to attend, then make sure you, you give them this uh, the link, the YouTube link that Matt will be sending out afterwards and they can watch the YouTube video of this. So for projects, we're profiling the Green Mountain Railroad Bridge Strengthening Project. We just completed the uh, contract with Vermont Rail Systems for this bridge strengthening on four different bridges on the Green Mountain. The Green Mountain, remember, goes from Rutland to, uh, to Bells Falls across the kind of the higher part of the state. And the bridges are located in Chester, Cavendish, and Ludlow, two bridges a longer span, two girders over the Williams River. Well, many are the, are, are the other two are the shorter span and they're deck girders over town highways. 
the push to bring these bridges up to a 263 kip capacity was related to one of our other projects, the Middlebury Tunnel. And during the 10 week shutdown of rail traffic in Middlebury, the Vermont Railway traffic will be detoured over the Green Mountain to the NECR and back to the Vermont Railway in Burlington. So it's critical to have the, uh, the Green Mountain up to snuff. And in their pre existing state, state the uh, four bridges could take these. 263 kip traffic loads, but only at 10 miles an hour. And slowing down the trains to 10 miles an hour on each of these bridges would have made, uh, you know, some schedule problems. Uh, the handoff between the locomotives and switching cars and everything in Bellows Falls would have been a problem. Remember that uh, freight trains take a long time to accelerate and deaccelerate, and then shut down to this 10 mile an hour. Each one of these bridges would have caused a particular particularly with these railroad grades of over 3%, would make acceleration and then deacceleration demanding and uh, take time out of the schedule. So work began in early winter and it was going smooth. And then the team completed the bridge in Ludlow, Ludlow in early 2020. However, shortly thereafter, the Hoosick Tunnel, which is on the Pan Am in New York collapse, that's just over the border from uh, North Adams, Mass and Bennington area. The result was a, a massive increase in the freight traffic over the Green Mountain, which left no work windows long enough to install and wreck these uh, match drill steel pieces. And the job shut down for nearly two months during the traffic detour. Luckily, the project was allowed to continue during the early stages of the COVID crisis. And the crew mobilized, remobilized in early March and worked quickly to re complete the remaining three bridges on time despite the previous delays. So our final work consisted of 22,522 pounds of structural steel and 3,228 rivets to remove and holes to match drill, bolt, and torque. So you see I adopted a much stricter protocols for working around this lead-based paint, which was on the existing bridge. And we were upfitted with a decon decontamination trailer, a decon trailer, and Don PA. PRs, which is a power air purified respirators during all cutting, grinding, and torch work. It was a learning curve to work with all this, but it provided an efficient means of an increased safety. So there they are early in the winter on one of these through girders over the Williams River. Another shot, you can see the, uh, the new bolts in the bottom of that cover plate. And then this is on one of the shorter span uh, deck girders and there, uh, there's some torch work and rivet busting work to get the uh, the old rivets off and replace them with bolts. A little bit more torch work and you can see the uh, the air purifying respirators, uh, the hood and everything that's uh, that's done by the uh, the welder and cutter and the Here's a, a view of the, the operation from the front. That looks like Dale there, but I can't tell for sure. And obviously that was, uh, this is obviously good gear to wear in the cold weather too. <laughs> so then from the project archives, we have uh, a photo from what I think is the Salisbury Middlebury area on the Vermont Railway for another bridge project done back in 2013. This was a nighttime operation and light towers in the back with uh, with steam and fog and things are, are making an interesting visual there with a couple people walking back towards the camera. So that's what we got. Everybody have a, a safe week. Yeah, coming up next week, we should be getting more onto a uh, a regular operation and uh, make sure you're following our protocols and again make sure that everybody on the crew has watched the video that uh, of the presentation that Matt just made. So Matt I'll hand it over to you and uh, we'll talk later. Thanks Ken and thanks everybody for coming in. Good turnout. We appreciate it and again let us know how we can help. We're here to help to help us guide through this um, new occupational hazard that we need to uh, mitigate. So stay safe, be healthy. Let's keep up the communication and have a great day. Should clear out actually today. So, and tomorrow's looking like a really nice day. So hope everyone is good. Bye-bye now.
I thought I switched you over, Matt, but I guess we can say we can sign off. I'll sign off, and uh, everybody uh, will be in touch today. And Matt will be in touch with everybody, a lot of the crews on on this testing. Have a good day. Thanks, Ken. You too. Thank mm -hmm. you.